The Illidari Council fight is one of the most annoying fights in this entire tier. It's potentially one of the only challenging fights this phase, outside of RNG fights like Supremus and Mother Shiraz, which can be mitigated if you play well or change your gear sets. Either way, we're always looking for different ways to optimize how we do this fight. And a couple weeks ago, I made a video about mage tanking this fight with a new strategy where you kite the actual mage boss. Instead of actually sitting there and eating the damage and allowing him to free cast his blizzards and flame strikes. Now, the reasons this strategy felt really good was mainly because the mage boss was one, doing less damage to your mage tank, so you didn't even need to assign a healer to this mage tank, but also he had less casts of flame strike and blizzard, which did most of the damage to the actual raid itself and would every now and then end up causing a lot of the deaths within your raid. This greatly reduced the healing needed for this fight and basically made it really easy easy. And we're also seeing the strategy used by almost every speedrun as we're moving forward into the speedrun era. But what if there was a better way of doing it? What if this wasn't actually the best way of taking this boss? What if there was a new strategy that we could do? Now, this is exactly what Discord user Grover thought of in the Mage Discord. He noticed that the boss actually has his arcane explosion ability that we've always kind of decided to outrange because it does a lot of damage and you never send melee in onto that boss. Now, his first question was, will it actually spam that ability and never cast Blizzard or Flame Strike? Because Dampen Magic makes that ability hit you for less than the arcane bolt itself when you're normally mage tanking. So, of course, everyone wanted to dive in and find out if this was actually worth it. Now, the first and main question is, does this actually reduce the amount of casts of any other abilities? Would it stop the boss from casting Blizzard or Flame Strike? Or if it shares a cooldown with these actual abilities itself, then it would mean there's a 33% chance of each of these individual abilities happening instead of a 50% chance of it being just a blizzard or a flame strike. Now to utilize this strategy, you're of course starting out like any other way you would fight this boss, sending in your mage tank first, generally with a bop to be safe, and then having them pick up threat on high nethermancer Zeravor. Instead of getting a massive threat lead and then just starting to kite the boss initially, you're actually gonna move in closer to the boss so that now he's actually actually also casting this arcane explosion ability. If you have your mage tank in on this fight, that means you basically have another DPS on this fight in general. One more DPS means the fight length is actually shorter. You're always gonna be doing more damage if you have another DPS. But does it actually deal with any of the problems we saw before? Does it actually reduce the amount of casts from blizzards or flame strikes? Or is it just the exact same thing as normal mage tanking? So to know that, we needed some data. And for that, we needed a ton of Warcraft logs. Now, these logs were sent over to me by Felipe from the Mage Discord, but it was actually all compiled into three amazing and easy to see graphs from Vivax in the Mage Discord as well. So massive shout out to Vivax for that. So if you look over on the left, we have normal tanking. In the middle, we have the kite strategy. And on the right, we have AE tanking. And now you can see that the normal tanking strategy has by far the highest average cast per minute of Blizzard and Flame Strike abilities. The kite strategy, however, has about 2.8 casts per minute, and the AE tanking strategy has about a three cast per minute so far. So we're seeing a massive range in all honesty, where it's kind of very similar between the kite strategy and the AE tanking strategy, with slightly more casts of these abilities going out from the AE tanking strategy than the kite strategy, but by a minimal amount, as you can see. There are some very high outliers, but on average, those are generally from fights that are lasting about six to eight minutes. So it's not something that's statistically significant. I wouldn't worry about these little dots up here. I would be more worried about the average means. So what does this really mean? Is this strategy viable? Is it better? Is it fully gonna change the way we play this fight? This strategy means you're gonna have a faster kill of the fight and you are not gonna take on average any more flame strikes or blizzards than you are from the kiting strategy. So your general raid damage taken is not anything higher than you would from the exact mage kiting strategy. And one of the biggest advantages of doing the AE tanking strategy is that your mage is actually now in the fight itself. Instead of fully removing one of your DPS, you have all 25 players in here pumping as much as you can so you can kill the bosses faster. And you also have this massive advantage that I haven't even talked about that 
all of your casters can turn and DPS Zeravor like they were doing before if you have the magic debuff on the main boss, on the Paladin boss. When you're doing the kite strategy, you don't have this opportunity. And whenever there's that magic resistance aura, you are doing so little DPS if you're bringing a lot of casters. It really is hurting your damage. But now everyone can just turn around and pump the mage boss as often as they need to, as long as he's not magic immune whenever that aura is out. This will greatly increase the overall damage of the raid itself, and again, that just shortens the fight. Now, the one major disadvantage that I can really see from using this strategy is that you generally still do need a healer to be watching out for your mage tank. He takes less damage than the normal tanking strategy, but he still does take damage. From a lot of the logs I was diving through, it was about 500 to 650 damage per second throughout the entire fight. So this does mean you're gonna want someone kind of looking out for this mage tank, making sure that they don't die. So what are the real big takeaways here? Is this strategy better? Is this gonna change the way we fight this boss? If you have more than four healers, there's no real downside to doing this strategy. Your mage takes quite a bit of damage, but it's not enough to offset really needing an extra healer exactly dedicated to him, you can have someone just throw off heals. And you're actually taking about the same amount of damage from the flame strikes and the blizzards. The huge, huge advantages of having extra DPS of the mage itself, but not only that, having all of your ranged DPS being able to turn to this mage boss whenever the magic resistance or a debuff is up on the paladin will massively increase the DPS of the entire raid, making this fight a lot quicker, which is the goal for a lot of people in speed runs. But not only that, it's kind of gonna make the fight easier and quicker for everyone. So I wanna shout out Grover for coming up with this idea. Every mage that went out there and tested it and gave all of their information to the mage discord, Felipe for showing me all of this information and Vivax for putting it together in some of the most incredible graphs I've seen in a very, very long time. So go out there and test this strategy yourselves, guys. I really encourage you to give it a shot and see if you guys like it. I think you're gonna really, really love it. This is amazing and I'm really glad there's so much info and so many people out there testing it. Now I will have a couple more strategy updates for different bosses as they come out, how you can kind of cheese it or just improve how you deal with each fight. But if you like any of that sort of content, make sure to like and subscribe or come hang out with me live on Twitch twitch.tv slash sarth and if there's any strategies you guys have been testing and want me to cover want to share with the world definitely let me know in the discord channel or in the comments below good luck out there guys and i'll see you all on the next one